Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test or a draft or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Alyssa, A-L-Y-S-S-A, -S -S -A, and I am the Gallery and Public Programs Manager at Art Starts in Schools. This month uh, in our Art Starts Explores program, we are exploring the theme of textures, how things feel. Um, different objects and different things have all kinds of different textures. Some things are smooth, some things are rough, some things are soft, others are hard. Everything that is around us has a different texture. Um, and today, specifically, we're going to be looking at exploring object poetry with textures. Now, as you might imagine, object poetry is essentially poems about objects around us. Um, and we're gonna have a lot of fun today exploring how we can turn the objects in our space into poems or write poems about them. So what you'll be needing to follow along today is just some paper. Um, and if you've explored with us before, you know that uh, we often use paper from the recycling bin uh, paper that we've used perhaps before, but that we can use again. We also use mark making tools. So mark making tools are anything that will make a mark on a piece of paper, whether that's a pen, a, a coloring pencil, um, a marker, um, mud, if you like, a stamp, uh, anything that you find that can make a mark on your paper. And lastly, we will be needing an assortment of objects. So here in my makerspace, I have lots of different textures, different funky objects um, that have different shapes, sizes, uh, feels to them. Uh, I have here some um, little paper stars. I have um, a little a uh, plug or uh, for um, my iPhone. I have these fuzzy balls. I have um, a hanger from my closet. I have some wire, lots of different objects. Um, and each one of them has a different feel to it. 
So as you get ready to make with me today, I encourage you to look around your room, feel for different objects. Uh, we're not going to be breaking these objects or drawing on any of these objects. Uh, so they can really be anything uh, that is in your home. We're just going to be using them as inspiration. So if you'd like to pause the video at this point and take a moment to look around your home for different objects, you can pause the video now and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so to warm us up to this idea of object poetry, we are going to start with an acrostic poem. An acrostic poem is a poem that, um, where each line in it starts with a letter that corresponds to the name of an object or a thing. So I'm gonna start with a string here. I have a bright red string. This is going to be my first object. And you can either write something about uh, a red string uh, just like I will be, or you can choose a different object and do the same exercise. So string starts with an S, and T, R, I, N, G, string. So to start my poem, uh, the first adjective is going to be an S, and this string feels very, or looks very snake-like um, because it's long and it kind of slithers along my maker space if I move it around. So I'm gonna start with snake-like, but I could also use other adjectives like sneaky or soft. When I'm feeling the texture, it feels soft. What word would you use to describe this string? What word are you starting your acrostic poem with? Okay, uh, now thinking about an adjective that starts with the letter T. What adjective starts with the letter T that describes this string? Hmm, uh, it's not very big, so I could say that it's tiny. I think about it as a character, perhaps. I could say that it's timid. It seems quiet or shy. It often sits in the closet and, and it doesn't come out. It doesn't um, show itself unless I put it out into my makerspace. So how about we use the word timid? Um, an adjective that starts with the letter R to describe this. Um, well, one very obvious one is that this string is a bright red. Um, and I think that I wanna have that word in my poem because it's such a strong feature of, of this uh, string. What word did you use to describe your object just now? What word that starts with the letter R would you use to describe this? Thinking about the letter now I, hmm. I is a little bit of a tricky one. What words start with the letter I? Well, earlier I said uh, that you could describe this as tiny because it's not very big. Another way to say tiny is itty bitty. So let's say that my string here is itty bitty. Because it's not the entire roll of string, it's just part of it. It's not very big. What do you think? Is there another word that I could use to describe this? Okay, so thinking now about the letter N. Hmm. Adjective starts with the letter N that describes this red string. Maybe the first word that comes to mind is normal. But I also don't know, is this string perfectly normal? What is normal? 
it's hard to describe something that is normal because so many different things and different people have all kinds of different ways of being. So the word normal is not an easy one to use to describe something. What if I said that this string is sort of nobody's and everybody's? Because again, it sits in my closet. I don't know if it's uh, in a way this string is mine, but it also could be anyone's. Uh, I don't feel very, very attached to this string. So maybe I could say my string is nobody's, but it's kind of also everybody's because I would share it with anyone. And lastly, I'm gonna need an adjective that starts with the letter G. I feel like I can't not notice that this string really seems to be sort of glowing on my desk because it's so bright. Um, I have a lot of bright things on my desk, but this one really stood out to me because of its bright red color. So how about I use the word glowing to describe this and maybe I'll say glowing on my desk. So here is my poem. I'm going to call it string. It's a short one. Again, it was an acrostic poem because each letter of each line, each line started with a letter corresponding to uh, the name of the object that I am writing about. You can also write acrostic poems following your name. So my name is Alyssa. If I wanted to write an acrostic poem about myself, I would write, add a different adjective that would follow each letter of my name. But here we're writing about the string. So if I read it now, this is my poem, my warm-up poem called String. Snake-like, timid, red, itty-bitty, nobody's and everybody's glowing on my desk. What is your poem? Would you like to share it with someone that you're making with? What did you create? What did they create? Did you write something down? Or perhaps did you draw something about an object? Today, if you prefer to draw instead of write, you can do a combination of writing and drawing or one or the other. It's up to you. So at this point, I'm gonna move my little string poem over here and put my string back into my pile of random objects. And I'm going to choose another object. And we're going to practice describing this object and creating a poem about this thing that is in front of us. So I have here a magnifying glass. The texture of it is kind of smooth. Here, there's kind of little indents that happen on the handle. So it makes it a little bit rougher, but there's also glass and the glass is very smooth. I have a paper clip. This is also somewhat smooth. It's hard. Uh, there's a wire here uh, that moves. Hmm. I have lots of different fabrics, some that are super soft. This one here is very, very soft. Um, and other ones that are still kind of soft, but they're a little bit more textured. They're, I can feel um, that there's more of a pattern here uh, in the fabric. So it feels a bit rougher. I have wire. This one is quite hard. Uh, it's bendy. I can move the texture around and change uh, the shape of it. Um, I have my hanger, which is quite hard. And again, this one sort of bends a little bit, but not too much. It's big, 
it's quite a large object compared to um, other objects here, although there are even bigger objects in this room. Um, the lamp that is next to me is probably about 10 times the size of this hanger. Um, the table that I'm working on is very large. This chair that I'm sitting in is also much bigger, but compared to the objects on my desk here, this is quite big. What objects do you have? What do they feel like? Uh, and what about your objects is kind of piquing your interest today? Which object are you interested in exploring further? Hmm, which of the objects in my space should I write a poem about? What objects here do I have do you like best? I think I'm actually going to write about this clothespin because it's not the most flashy of my objects. It doesn't have any bright color, um, but it's capable of holding a lot of things together. And I think it would be interesting to write about this clothespin. Now it's your turn. What object do you have that you want to write about? Can you choose between objects? Or perhaps you want to write about more than one object. You could choose more than one if you like. And make sure that you also share your objects um, with the people that you're making with um, so that if you want, you could have uh, more than one person write about the same object and see what you come up with and how those the poems that you make might be different or similar. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to explore um, is with a piece of paper. So I'm gonna use some uh, gift tissue that's left over from last year. And I'm gonna use it as paper. I'm gonna start to collect words uh, that describe this object. So I want to collect any sensory details. So perhaps things that I see, uh, that I hear that the object makes, um, uh, that I feel, that I smell, that I taste. I don't know if I want to taste um, my clothespin today, but maybe the object that you have is something that you can taste. Uh, maybe you chose a fruit. Uh, as your thing, or maybe you chose a snack of your choice. And perhaps you can taste it and describe what it tastes like. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the middle of my paper, and I'm going to start to collect words that describe this. Hmm, what words describe this clothespin? It is definitely not soft. It is Hard. Um, but it's not rough, it's smooth. Um, I could say that it opens and closes. I'm even going to go so far as to say that it has a kind of mouth because I can't look at this clothespin without thinking about it as a kind of creature with a mouth. So let's say it has a mouth. What words are you collecting right now as you describe your object? Are you writing also about a clothespin or have you chosen a different object that you have in your home? While I might continue to collect a few more uh, adjectives or words that describe my object, I'm gonna think about what my object is similar to. So while we create our poems today, we're gonna be exploring metaphors. Now metaphors is a pretty big word but a metaphor is something that we can use when we're writing to compare one thing to another thing. And these things don't actually have to be the same. 
Um, but by comparing one thing to another, we can give someone that's reading what we're, what we're writing about a certain feeling. For example, um, I might say, if I use the prompt, um, that school is like, if I wanted to compare, let's say a day at school, a day at school is, so if I wanted to compare what a day at school is like to something else, so that someone has, when they, when they read my poem about school, um, that they would have an idea of, of, of what my experience of school is like, I might compare it to something else. So for example, a day at school is, um, So here's my first metaphor. I'm comparing a day at school to a deep dive into the ocean. Now, although school might not actually be in the ocean, I'm choosing to compare these two because I want to give the idea that school can sometimes feel like diving into the unknown, learning something new. There's so much that we don't know about our oceans. Um, and when we go to school, we go to school so that we can learn things that we don't know yet. And so that we can um, learn more about the people that are around us, the places that we live, and how all of these relationships come together. So school can sometimes feel like a deep dive uh, into the ocean. So now thinking about my clothespin, and metaphors, what are some things that I could compare this clothespin to? And I can use my list of words here to help me. So I wrote here, one interesting one is that a clothespin holds things together. What's something else that holds things together? Our hands, perhaps? What if I said, a clothespin a clothespin is a hand that holds things together so i know that a clothespin isn't actually a hand but i'm comparing it to a hand because in some ways my hand and this clothespin can do similar things all right so i'm going to keep thinking about different things that i want to compare my clothespin to and I'm going to encourage you to do the same. So thinking about the object that you have in front of you, whether it's a clothespin or whether it's something else, I want you to think about what are some things, some qualities that your object has that are similar to that of another object. And we're going to start to collect different phrases or different ideas um, that compare the two. And then we'll come back and we will look at what we've made uh, and start to make our poem. All right, let's go. started to think about how I can compare my clothespin to different things or different situations using some of the adjectives that I had already collected here. And I've made here a list of metaphors to describe my clothespin. What phrases did you come up with? Do you want to read what you have made to someone that's next to you? If you'd like to share it with them at this point, you can pause the video to share. And perhaps you wanna share uh, a word that you wrote that you like, a picture, an idea that you had, or even the entire thing that you created. What did you make? So here, um, 
what I came up with as I was thinking about what this clothespin could represent and what it's compared to, I wrote, a clothespin is a hand that holds things together, a springboard of connections, a small piece of a big puzzle, a door that opens and closes, or nope, a door that opens new possibilities. A soft feather floating lightly. A hungry mouth opening and closing. So again, I went with mouth. What did you come up with? Do you think that, do you agree that these sort of comparisons are similar to the clothespin? If you were to write something about a clothespin, would you write something differently or similar to what I have here? All right. Um, so now that we've started to collect words and we've started to collect metaphors, um, if you want at this point, you can move on to a second object and try this exercise again to see what happens. Um, you could also spend some time editing what you made. So if you want to change uh, what you've written, uh, for example, for mine here, I had two that talked about opening and closing. I have the door that opens new possibilities and I also have a hungry mouth opening and closing. Um, and even though I like both of them, I think I like the hungry mouth more than the door. So perhaps I want to edit this one to change it a little bit. How do I want to write it differently? Still think about it a little bit like a door. Um, but perhaps I have hmm, something else. I had talked about it being hard and that's something that I haven't really written about. So maybe instead of using this one, I'm not going to be precious about what I've written so far. Maybe instead I'm going to write, um, I'm going to compare it to something else that's hard. It's kind of like a, um, hmm. okay. It's kind of like a hairbrush disentangling a mess because when you go to put clothes on your clothesline, you take them out of your pile of laundry and you separate them and you disentangle the mess. You take the mess apart and you make it organized. Um, and also uh, because a hairbrush is hard. And this is also hard. So that's another reason why I want to compare them. So I'm going to actually use that line instead. So if there's any way that you want to edit your poem, you can edit and change it. Um, the first draft, which is what this is, uh, it's normally a little bit messy because it's really just our ideas uh, put down in front of us. And sometimes we want to change them and that's great. Okay, so for the last part of this workshop, we're going to practice adding texture to our voices. Now, you may never have thought about your voice as having texture. But actually the way that we speak and the way that we change the sound or the variation uh, of the sounds that we make, um, we create different textures with our voice. And we can actually color our voices. We can add texture to our voices by changing the way uh, that we make words sound and making words sound like what they mean. So for example, Let's start with a simpler one. So I'm just going to use the words small and big. So when I'm just saying them sort of neutrally, I could just say small, big. The way that I'm saying them, they don't really sound super different. I haven't really textured my voice. I'm just reading the words small, big. But if I want to texture my voice and make the word sound like what it means, I might say small like this, small. 
I made my voice sound smaller by making it quieter and shorter. Small, small. Do you wanna try saying small in a small way? Now you might imagine that the opposite is gonna happen when I use the word big. So if I wanna texture my voice and say big in a big way, I could say big, big. I'm making my voice much louder when I say the word big and I'm also stretching it out so that it sounds larger. When I said small, I said it short and small. And when I said big, I made it louder and longer. So to hear the difference, I'll say small, big. Did you notice the difference in my voice? Okay, so now I'm gonna look at my poem here and I'm gonna think about how I might want to read it in a way that makes it sound like what it means. So first, I'm just gonna read it neutrally. A clothespin is a hand that holds things together, a springboard of connections, a small piece of a big puzzle, a soft feather floating lightly, a hungry mouth opening and closing, a hairbrush disentangling a mess. Okay, so I've just read it neutrally. It didn't really add too much texture to my voice. But this time, I'm going to practice making these words sound like what they mean. So I'm going to read it a little bit slower. And I might say certain words multiple times until I feel like they really sound like what they mean. Okay, here we go. A clothespin is a hand that holds things together. A springboard. Ooh, I like that word a springboard. I'm gonna try to say it to make it sound like it's springing. Springboard of connections. A small piece of a big puzzle. A soft, a soft feather floating lightly. A soft feather floating lightly. A hungry mouth opening and closing. A hungry mouth opening and closing. A hairbrush disentangling a mess. Let's try that one again. A hairbrush disentangling a mess. Okay, so I've started to add some texture to my voice here. What did you notice about how my voice sounded like when I added texture to it? Did you notice any difference between the first time when I read it neutrally and the second time when I explored different textures? Now I want you to practice reading this poem that I just wrote or the poem that you wrote and try texturing your, your, your voice in different ways. You can practice making them sound like what they mean. You can also practice and see what happens when you don't make them sound like what they mean. So I hope that you continue exploring texturing words, whether it's the words that you collected to describe your objects, whether you're describing new objects, and trying to texture the words that you're that you're collecting um, that describe these different things. Keep exploring and keep having fun. Um, this is a wonderful activity to do when you're at home um, and you have uh, and you're and you feel a little bit bored and you're not sure what to do. You can look at different objects and you can create poems about them. Um, at Art Starts Explores, we practice. Uh, taking things apart and not keeping them. So although I love the, the three little poems here that I created, I'm going to return these to the recycling bin and the parts of the paper that um, I haven't used, for example, the bottom of this paper, I'm gonna keep so that I can make with it next time. And 
And one thing that uh, I am going to keep with me though is something that I learned. And one thing that I learned today while I was exploring um, is that um, there are a lot of different metaphors that I can connect something as simple as a clothespin with. Um, and that feels really exciting uh, because often when I write, um, I don't choose small and simple objects like a clothespin to describe. But I found it really interesting how I could use something so simple and create a really interesting uh, poem about it. What did you learn while you were making today? What's something that you learned that you'd like to keep with you and remember for the next time that you make with us? Thank you so much for joining with me today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. I am going to leave my camera on as I always do as I clean up my space. You're welcome to continue cleaning along with me um, so that your space is ready for next week. See you then.